Hey guys, I think uh, something very important uh, to understand is how money works and I see a lot of misconceptions about that and also in all layers of society um, even among intel a lot of intellectuals uh, that write the very big and fat books it's just not understood um, the money system is pretty simple to understand um, some people think that commercial banks create money out of thin air but that's not true there is only one institution that is able to create more dollars or more euros and that's the central bank uh, in America it's called the Federal Reserve which is a political institution it's not a private enterprise um, although the Federal Reserve in America has shareholders the policy is set by the rulers by the governors by the by the president and um, his uh, ministers who appoint the director of the central bank who decides how much money is created and what the interest uh, rates are so um, what you see is that um, the central bank they create on average about 10 percent more euros or us dollars per year and how they do that is um, and currently there's about 5,000 billion euros in circulation in in america it's about 5,000 us dollars in circulation and uh, and that's the total of the amount of coins and and paper bills but that's only a small fraction the biggest fraction is just di digital money that they create which they transfer digitally uh, to the buyer because for every uh, when they create money they basically buy something with that usually they just buy government bonds what does that mean that means that the government issues a bond they say look I want to borrow a uh, billion dollars who wants to buy this and then the Federal Reserve or the Central Bank in Europe they say I want to buy this and I create more 1 billion more US dollars out of thin air eh? just in the computer they, they, they raise the amount of dollars in circulation from 5,000 billion to 5,001 billion and they buy that bond and then the government the US government gets 1 billion dollars on their bank account and has now created also one bond that the Federal Reserve now owns that's how money is created out of thin air and um, and, 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 and banks <coughs> can't do that uh, banks people think that you commercial banks they borrow money out of thin air but that's not true the bank if you go to the bank to have a, a loan to buy a house or or a car then the bank can only give you the money that they received from others which is depositors um, and so and ju they just make a margin they they will give depositors these days zero or one percent or two percent and 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 they will ask you three four percent uh and so their difference is uh, is how they make money um this is very important to understand um because people love to confuse others the theft here is done by the central bank and the government who gets well, who pays the bill if, if they create more uh, dollars or more euros out of thin air and they buy government bonds who pays the bill well that's everybody that has currency which is if you have coins or paper bills while well, the, the value will go down because suddenly they are more in circulation um, um, but also uh, if you have money on a bank account let's say you have a, a million dollars on a bank account or let's keep it uh, ten thousand dollars you have ten thousand dollars on a bank account um, well because the, the more dollars are in circulation uh, a year later about ten percent more you will be able to that ten thousand dollars you can buy stuff this year but if you leave it on the bank account for one year and then you buy stuff with it you will notice that prices on average have gone up by five six seven percent and so you can buy five six seven percent less and who got that well that's the one that created the money out of thin air which is the central bank they actually 
got that which you have less of now they got more eh? so the five percent that you lose well they got that and how did and who who got that well they basically gave it to the government by buying a government bond and so the government got that money and spend it on all kind of stuff and that's how you uh, lose if you save money it's not because a commercial bank uh, gives you too little interest no it's because the central bank created more um, uh, uh, currency and so your currency has gone down in value uh, that's that's how it works um, the bank of course when you, you give them money you, you save money on a bank account they don't keep the money just there they bor they, they, they lend it to someone else eh? but they have an obligation towards you to pay you back but the obligation is like hey, you, you put ten thousand dollars there the obligation is to pay you back ten thousand uh, dollars and 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 that's just yeah it's not a good deal um, because there will be more dollars in circulation every day and so it's not smart to to borrow someone ten thousand um, dollars and say uh, just give me ten thousand dollars back that's not a good deal you should tell to them if you borrow it for one year you should at least give me ten thousand five hundred dollars back because that will just buy me the same uh, it's I'm not even making a profit here I'm not even counting for the risk to lose my money when I borrow it to you of course the risk is very low when you give your money to a bank that they will lose it because when they go broke the central bank prints more money and so they don't go broke <laughs> so and so the chance is very low that you will lose your money with the bank uh, quickly but the chance is absolutely certain uh, that you will lose it slowly <laughs> for sure um, so yeah um, that's how it works and so cryptocurrency is a, a great invention because because you don't have that drain eh? when you save your money your bitcoins for example well nobody is printing more out of thin air uh, and so that's very good there are more bitcoins created but the people that receive them do something useful they are validating transactions and securing the network and so you get you get that value which is necessary and um, and, 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 and and so even though there are more bitcoins coming in circulation it's it's not well these days it's not 10% per year anymore um, it's it, it goes down every year um, so if you save money it's better to save it uh, that way uh, but of course Bitcoin is much more a speculative investment than money because the value of Bitcoin is overall very low five billion dollars everything will depend on whether more people start using Bitcoin whether the value will go up or not and so Bitcoin because it's still so small in market up is much more of an investment than it is money um, forgot to say so um, people say um, it's it's not creating money out of thin air because the, the the money created by the central bank and they buy a government bond with it well actually the government will pay that money back and the moment they pay it back the bond disappears but also the money will be destroyed again by the central bank and so no extra money was created they just need to pay it back but of course they never pay it back because the amount of because the year later they borrow again like they they just create more bonds and more bonds they never pay back and and so so you see that the pile of debt uh, that the government is so supposed to pay back only grows sometimes it shrinks a little but it's like a curve like that grows and then sometimes there's two years or so uh, a couple of years they pay some back and then it goes up again so and the same with the amount of uh, money outstanding the amount like the, the 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 for example the european central bank i think it was about 2000 billion euros that was in circulation then the 2008 crisis happened they created 1000 2000 billion euros extra 
so it went from 2000 to 3000 4000 or something and then and then then and in two three years and then it went down by with 500 uh, bill 500 or thousand and then it went back up so so it's it's really like that and then it goes down the amount of money in circulation and then it goes back up so overall it's on average in the US about 15 percent and in Europe about 10 percent per year extra uh, currency and circulation um, and it used to be that uh, before the financial crisis that it was not accepted at least not in Europe in the, not not the ECB because the ECB is pretty new it was created in 1999 or uh, in the 80s or 70s but only in 1999 the euro was introduced so there were some strict rules that were introduced by the Germans who have had a hyperinflation and um, and they wanted to avoid that and the rules were that the central bank cannot buy government bonds and when they create new money they can do that but not to buy government bonds because that's just um, that's just gonna cause hyperinflation in the long term and so that was not allowed but what happened was that commercial banks would buy like would issue bonds and then the the, the central bank would buy those bonds um, and uh, and then the commercial banks would buy the government bonds so <laughs> when you issue, create new money of course you cannot control where it goes and uh, and uh, and there was just one step in between that the commercial banks would just be a step in between to transfer the money created to the government bonds but um, that uh, good deal that the commercial banks had fell away after 2008 when uh, central banks in Europe also started to directly buy government bonds so that's how the system works bye hey guys I forgot to mention something I need to add to the video um, because often people really think that commercial banks are able to create money out of thin air um, that's not true as explained before but what is possible is that the commercial bank um, so they get money from people um, that deposit money with them and then they are their business model is to lend it out to someone else and make a profit on the margin yeah, so lend it out for more than they uh, get them pay you for your money but um, what they could also do is of course just put the money in their pocket spend it on uh, uh, just put the money in their pocket and then um, spend it uh, steal it and not uh, lend it out to someone else but in the books they can say that they did lend it out to someone else but they actually never did and and uh, and so the money is gone but in the bookkeeping it looks like it's still there it's only going to be a problem when people uh, withdraw their money from the bank and well they can't pay it because it's gone and they can't get it from the one they lend it to because he never got he n that's not a real person um, and so it's all but that will only become clear when people take money off the bank account and for a bank mm, that's never gonna happen that 100% of the people want their money off the bank account it's maybe 10% or 20% uh, on a yearly basis I don't know the numbers but and then if you have a bank panic then maybe it's like 30 or 40 percent maybe 50 percent but and so it could well be that the bank is actually um, that you're using is not on the books it looks like everything is okay but in reality the money isn't there it's already it's gone already a long time uh, half of the deposits uh, uh, but nobody knows it and and what happens is then if you get a bank run what will happen is that all oh, they, they certainly get certain certainly if there would ever be a panic about that then the central bank just says oh no, we will give this bank or go, local governments oh we will borrow this bank uh, a lot of money uh, uh, or give this bank a lot of money and then suddenly the masses are relaxed again that this bank won't go broke or they raise the insurance deposit like if it goes broke everybody gets 
100,000 euro. That's what they did in 2008. They raised it from 20,000 to 100,000 euro. And so most people are then relaxed again and, and they don't um, try to take out all their money to, of the bank. And, and that way the fraud isn't revealed. Huh? Um, that the money is, is not even there. So that certainly is possible. Especially if you see these balance sheets of these big banks. Uh, these are gigantic numbers. Eh? For example, ING. At the time it, it changed it's a couple of years back, but it had a balance sheet of 1,300 billion euros. Eh? Just one bank. 1,300 billion euros. So that's the amount of money that they owe people. Uh, but also the amount of money that they invested somewhere. But of course, I mean, these are very big numbers and it could certainly be that that that's not there, that 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 that, that, that hundreds of billions or maybe <laughs> like that are just not there, that they are long gone, but they are supposed to give that back to people, but that will never happen because so so that's possible. But this is not creating money out of thin air. That's just stealing customer funds. Right? Um, uh, so that's what commercial banks can do and certainly with uh, how how it's working that they they actually these these banks you know these are very old institutions and uh, and, and 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 so 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 it could well be that that that, that is the case um and then something else of course also is once you understand how money works you can see that it's very interesting to borrow money for the interest rates that are um, the, uh, happening. The interest rates are very, very low. They continue to go down to borrow money to buy a house or to buy a car. Um, I don't know the rates, but it's somewhere between 1%, 2% or 3%. This is considerably lower than the real inflation rate, which is 5 6 7% that prices on average go up per year um, and so it's very interesting to borrow but that's because there is so much money created and so um, and that's why you also don't get interest for your own money if you give your own money to the bank they will give you almost no interest because they don't need your money they get uh, the central bank creates so much money these days that the the, 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 the the commercial banks have more than enough uh, uh, money available for because your comp your money is competing with the central bank if you give your money to a commercial bank well they are they don't care who, whose money it is that they get that to borrow out it may be from private people or for central banks that doesn't matter they take the cheapest money available and so um, and, and so the central bank says, hey, here, here, you know, here is money from me and you don't have to, you, you have to give me only half percent interest. Then they take the, 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 the money from the central bank. Eh? And, then, and then they don't need your money. They can just say to you, hey, if you can deposit your money on our bank, but we only pay half percent because that's the rate we, uh, that we that's, that's, that's. We don't need to pay more to attract more money because with if we pay that rate we can get all the money we want and so so their challenge is not to get enough money from customers no their challenge is to borrow it all out with a profit margin and uh, to clients that um, uh, when they go broke they don't lose the the money but they can reclaim it. That's why real estate, they like to borrow for real estate because if the client doesn't um, pay the bill, they just um, uh, yeah, claim the property and sell it off and they have their money back. So it is very interesting to borrow in this money system, um, especially for goods that go up on average uh, with a real inflation rate, like real estate on average goes up with 7% per year, 8% per year which is not profit, it's just the money goes, US dollar goes and Euro goes down and pounds, they all go down at that rate per year. So if you can borrow for 3% the money and you put it in a building and then you pay it off the building slowly and uh, but the building actually goes up with like 7% per year on average, that's a good deal. So you can certainly make a business out of that, but 
of course as any business it's work uh, but you that's an interesting thing to do um, so voila uh, that was uh, some more uh, detail on the money system bye